welcome our presenter for this morning, practitioner, I almost said reverend, <laughs> Sandra Cooper, who is a practitioner par excellence, who lives this teaching, who is herself an expression of love and light and joy. Please help me welcome Sandra Cooper. Thank you, Carol. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the Temple of Light. Welcome to our hearts. And we also welcome all those of you who are joining us on the World Wide Web. You know, the East Indian mango tree in my backyard is in full bloom. I'm sure many of your mango trees are in bloom as well. Some of them are even bearing. No, this tree bears pro prolifically. And in a few months, I will have mangoes, not Oti'iti apples, not guava, not oranges, but big, sweet, juicy East Indian mangoes. Those of you who are in foreign, ah, I just want you to feel and just, you know, the, the juice flowing of those mangoes. You see, decades ago, someone planted a seed a single East Indian mango seed in the spot where my mango tree is now. And that was the genesis of the mango tree enjoyed by me, my friends and family, my neighbors, and all and sundry other characters who come up over the fence to help themselves. The mango seed and the tree with its blossoms and prolific fruit made me think of the seed of love out of which each one of us was created. Now, when that seed is nurtured by demonstrations of kindness, compassion, empathy, and more love, we're bound to blossom, to thrive and prosper, bearing fruits of success, confidence, joy, and, of course, more love. So seeing that this is the last Sunday in the Love Month, my message this morning is titled Love Blossoms, and you can take the blossoms as either a verb or a noun. Inspired by the Joyous Journal series written by Drs. Petra Weldes and Christian Sorensen, I invite you to join me as we delve into their wisdom together, exploring ways to make the seed of love within us blossom and bear fruit all the year through. Now, at the heart of love's seed is the divine presence of God that created each and every one of us out of a profound act of love, imbuing us with all its qualities and attributes. The power and presence of God is so vast, it is incomprehensible, yet so intimate that it is closer to us than our very breath. Our very first experience of falling in love should be with God, and we should do so with all our heart, mind, and soul. Loving God brings freedom from fear and shines a light of clarity on the truths that we must live by. When we have the energy of love going on and are in touch with its radiance, anything is possible. We blossom, we raise our vibration, we become more attractive, confident, and self-assured. Deep abiding love of God blossoms into an open-hearted embrace of life with laughter, enthusiasm, openness, and a positive regard for all people. Consider that every time your heart swells with joy, you are loving God. It doesn't matter whether it is with another human being or you're experiencing a blissful moment in nature or some sweet, sweet Sunday evening music, oldies music. Notice where you are whenever you feel this way and anchor that feeling in your heart. Now seek to be that same way in other situations and with other people. Love blossoms on the outside, but it must begin with blossoms on the inside. It is difficult to express love outwardly when we don't feel our own sense of self-worth. 
One of the biggest reasons we shut out love is because we feel unworthy. We must challenge any negative self-concept that creeps upon us, you know, that critical inner voice that tells us that we are not good enough. When we do this and take the loving actions that contradict that inner critic, we enhance our own sense of worth and are able to get closer to the people that we love. Now, every time that we look in the mirror, we need to know that what is reflecting back at us behind the extra pounds, the folds, and the gray hairs, oh, and the wrinkles, is a perfect child of a perfect God. Focus on those qualities that you love about yourself and love them up. Focus too on those aspects that you wish were different and love them up too. They are a part of what makes each and every one of us unique. It makes us who we are. So while we are busy nurturing and caring for and loving others, and I think about my mom here, Mommy would give away her last piece of planting because one of us felt that we wanted more than what we were shared. You know, mothers do that, don't. And so we must not forget to give ourselves the same gifts that we choose to give to others. The pampering, the time alone, the sleep and the good food. You ever taken yourself out for a meal in a restaurant, just you alone? Mm -hmm. Yeah, do it more often. You cannot give from an empty cup. You know, in the, in the airplane, they say, put on your mask first, so you need to nurture yourself. Loving yourself is another way to make the seed of love blossom through you. Let's say together, I take time to care for and nurture myself. Together, I take time to care for and nurture myself. It is in, re it is in relationship, though, that love has a potential to thrive and blossom the most. Relationships provide a deep, profound way for us to grow spiritually, do you think? Hmm. It matters not if it's a lover, a child, a sibling, a parent, a friend, or a colleague, it doesn't matter. In relationship, we are confronted with all the ways that our past, our conditioning, and our subconscious patterns are still playing themselves out in our lives. In relationship, every rough edge you have is exposed. That's why some of us sort of stay away from relationship, you know. Mm -hmm. Every old belief you have is questioned. Every area of control or neglect is revealed. And you get to see where you harbor resentment and judgment. Do you agree with that? In relationship, our our shadow, as well as our light, um, is exposed. Loving another person provides a wonderful opportunity to see God in them. Each person is a unique, precious radiant of God's light. When we see their light, we also help them to see that light in themselves. Loving another person is a powerful recognition of their value, worth, and their presence. Here's a, something that you can consider. How is your love a gift to the special people in your life? And what can you do to love them more openly and more deeply? So say with me, I'll say it once. I see the light of God's love reflected in the eyes of everyone. I see together, I see the light of God's love reflected in the eyes of everyone. You know, as, a, as important as it is to love others, it is equally important to allow others to love you. The master teacher entreated us to love our neighbor as ourselves. Allowing yourself to be loved, allow spirit to refill your cup so you have more to give. It also reminds us that as children of God, there is nothing you need to do to earn anybody's love. Simply being yourself is enough. Do you believe that? We just have to be because we, we are perfect, whole, and complete just the way we are. Say with me, I let the gift of love flow freely into my open heart. Together, I let the gift of love flow freely into my open heart. 
Yes, and Reverend John says, and out again. So we just allow the divine circulation of love to keep flowing. Now, like the mango seed, I mean, before it became a strong, sturdy mango tree, it, it needed a little bit of care when it was perhaps a seedling. So love needs nurturing and space for the tree to blossom and flourish. Love requires attention and can't be fit into convenient moments like Valentine's Day. So we need to make room for love by creating spaciousness in your heart, setting aside resentment, grudges, and hurts. Make room for love by creating spaciousness in your calendar, setting aside quality time to spend with your loved ones. Make love by, make, make, make room for love, <laughs> by that, that too, by, <laughs> by creating spaciousness, spaciousness in your mind, setting aside complaints, gripes, and criticism. And make, make room for love, or, or when we make room for love, we make room for spirit to permeate our relationships, bringing vitality, richness, and joy. This is so important now in our fast-paced world where we pay so much more attention to our, our devices than we do to the people that we love. Have you ever been to a restaurant and seen two people together and each one of them is on, a, on their phones? And maybe we are guilty of that ourselves? We need to watch that. So let's say it together. I consciously and intentionally create space for love in my life. I consciously and intentionally create space for love in my life. Friends, here's where I'd like to speak a little bit about the F word. You know what I'm talking about, right? Now, while love is an amazingly important part of having a thriving and fruitful life, unforgiveness, anger, and judgment will close our heart and restrict life's blessings. They also become filters through which you see yourself, others, and every situation in your life. What would happen if you, made, if you became very intentional in loving and forgiving those you believe have hurt you? Make the effort then to forgive yourself for all those things you blame yourself for. And that sometimes the list can be very high, you know. A long, long list of a shouldas and a wouldas and a could have. And if I didn't, you know, we, we tend to go into the self-blame thing very, very deeply. We cannot be an avenue for love and be cynical and resentful at the same time. Forgiveness is the transformative power that will engage, and, sorry, that will disengage a stubborn, righteous mind. It invites caring and understanding and is the gateway to the freedom of joyous living. So here's a forgiveness practice that you might want to consider, and it will go a long way in facilitate healing. Um, Petra Welders and Christian Sorensen suggest to, make a, to think about an area of your life, and you might want to do that right now. Think about an area of your life where you feel wronged or where you have experienced an internal conflict uh, or are experiencing such a conflict about forgiving someone. And I want you to list the logical reasons why you should not forgive them. That's a very interesting approach. List the logical reasons why you shouldn't forgive them. They did this, they did that, it, they made me feel this, and so on and so forth. And I want you to spend some time and look at that list. And to witness the list and honor each reason. But don't stay with it and play victim. And then I want you to make the illogical, spiritual choice to bring inner peace into this situation. And then having done that journal on how that experience has affected you, how it has healed and freed you. Because sometimes when we write down the reasons and we look at them and you know, we realize that they're not so, so important after all, and then we are, we, are, we are able to release their hold over us. 
And you can also practice the Hawaiian teaching of forgiveness, ho'oponopono, which roughly translates to make things right. And it says very simply, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. You know, it is said that love is more powerful than the waves of the ocean and the winds of the sky and can overcome any circumstance that life dishes out to us. Here's a story that demonstrates this. There were once two warring uh, tribes, one that lived on the lowlands and the other one that lived up in the mountains. The mountain people invaded the lowlanders one day, and as part of their plundering, they kidnapped the baby of one of the lowlander families, taking the infant with them back up into the mountains. The lowlanders were distraught. They didn't know the mountain nor how to track the mountain people in the steep terrain. Nevertheless, they sent out their best party of fighting men to climb the mountain and bring the baby home. After several days of effort, however, they had climbed only a few hundred feet. Feeling hopeless and helpless, the lowlander men decided that the cause was lost and they prepared to return to the village without the baby. As they were packing their gear for the descent, they saw the baby's mother walking towards them. They realized that she was coming down the mountain that they hadn't figured out how to climb. And she had the baby strapped to her back. How could that be? One man greeted her and said, we couldn't climb the mountain. How did you do this when we, the strongest and most able men in the village, couldn't do it? She shrugged her shoulders and she said, it wasn't your baby. Such is the power of love. You've heard about people who will lift cars and ex demonstrate extraordinary strength in the face of a crisis just because the, um, a loved one is, 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 is being hurt. It is that love that we believe will bring healing to the world at this time. There's a letter allegedly written by physicist Albert Einstein and there have been other reports to refute that this wasn't so. It's a makeup business, but it's still a, you know, the letter that I read was really powerful. So I'm going to pull from it because the words are, are really worth sharing. And it says, this is back in 1902, it says, if we want our species to survive, if we are to find meaning in life, if we want to save the world and every, every sentient being that inhabits it, Love is the one and only answer. Perhaps we are not yet ready to make a bomb of love, a device powerful enough to entirely destroy hate and selfishness and the greed that devastates the planet. However, each individual carries within them a small but powerful generator of love whose energy is waiting to be released. When we learn to give and receive this universal energy, said the letter, we will have affirmed that love conquers all, is able to transcend anything and everything because love is the quintessence of life. End of that alleged letter. But it's still powerful words, don't. So even if the letter was false, the writing is powerful, we agree. Love is indeed the greatest avenue of divine expression, you know. It can transmute pain into joy, scarcity into abundance, and sickness into health. It will take fear, worry, and anxiety and dissolve them all with infinite possibilities, blossoming into loving relationships and joyful encounters. Now this morning in my meditation, there is a, an article written by Ron, Reverend Ron Fox, and I'll just read a paragraph where he quotes Jack Cornfield, and he says, Jack Cornfield wrote about the healing power of love this way, and he, he, this is a quote. Perhaps this is the best thing we can do to help where, when we can, to witness each other with kindness, to offer our presence, to show the trust we have in life. Spiritual life is not about knowing much, but about loving much. End of that quote. You know, you know, what the world needs now indeed is love, sweet, sweet love. And so 
what can we do here in Jamaica? I mean, it seems as if we are so distant from what is going on uh, between Russia and the Ukraine. But um, as we will hear, if sand can turn into a pearl, and if a worm can turn into a butterfly, then love can heal the world. So as we prepare to begin a new month and you know, wrap up this love month, I'm inviting you to do three things and to think about and act on during the next month. So this is your assignment. Should you decide to accept it. Did I get you right, Reverend John? Okay. First thing, there are three things and it's about one, making room for love. Two, um, growing love. And three, showing love. So making room, growing love, showing love. The first one, ask yourself, how can I make room for love in my life and in my relationships? In other words, you can't fill a glass that's already full. So you have, we have to drop something. We have to let go something. What leftover hurts and resentments, shame or guilt, do we need to let go of? First thing. Second thing, what spiritual practices must I embrace to nurture and grow love in my life? In other words, how do I water the seed of divine love that is, it's not going anywhere, it's there. How do we water it and allow it to blossom in our lives? And the third thing, what specific action, I want you to think now about your children, your spouses, your friends, your spiritual community, and the people that are important in your life, and ask yourself this question. What specific actions can I take to show love to others in my life? You know, it would be like the husband who, you know, was screwing a light bulb and you know, his wife is upset because she's not telling him she loves him. Love is a doing word. We need to do things. We need to speak it. So what can we do to show love, to demonstrate the caring, the kindness, the compassion, the empathy, the understanding, the respect that is the, 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 the nurturing fuel that sustains life? What can we do to demonstrate that? Friends, I invite you to take the time to celebrate all the love blossoms in your life. Plant seeds today that will make um, love flourish throughout your lifetime and from which others will benefit. Celebrate your significant other, your family, your friends, your spiritual community, your career, your health, your prosperity. Celebrate your willingness to be open to trust and to give of yourself. Let's say that together. I am willing to open, to trust, and to give of myself. Together. I am willing to open, to trust, and to give of myself. And celebrate the gift of love and life. And how blessed and how loved we truly are. Namaste.